In this video, I'm going to show you some common troubleshooting steps that you can take when you're troubleshooting a single IP security camera. In this video, I just have a singular IP camera here. You're going to always want to focus on one camera at a time. And to do that, you're going to actually go to your device entry list and then delete all those device entries and make sure you disconnect any of your cameras that are working. So in order to do that, I've already disconnected all of my other cameras and then I'm going to right click and then click the main menu option. If you're not already logged into your NVR, you will need to enter just the graphical user password that can be located on the top of your NVR. To get to the camera list settings, I need to then go to the camera setting at the bottom left hand side here and click camera. Here you can see there is a device list at the top and then there's a device list at the bottom. The device list at the bottom are all of your added cameras. You want to make sure you delete any leftover or stale entries here while you're troubleshooting your camera. This uh, will help you not get, one, confused with your own cameras, and then two, it also helps the NVR not get confused uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot a single camera. So again, you'll need to tick any of these channels that are left over and click the delete button. I don't have any channels added, but I'll just show you after manually adding a bogus channel here. So let's say I had a channel added and I wanted to delete that. I could add this channel and again you just tick this box here and click delete. So now that I've deleted all of my channels I can move forward. Another thing to check before we move on with trying to troubleshoot a camera is you will want to go right click, go back out, go into the network settings of the NVR and then go to the switch setting. And you want to make sure that these settings are default. It's 10.1.1.1 for the default settings. Do not change these switch settings inside of the network settings and make sure they are back to default before moving forward with troubleshooting. If the camera is set to an IP address that doesn't fit this scheme, then the IP uh, camera will never be able to connect to the NVR. So again, you want to make sure you set these back to the default if you've ever changed them, which is the 10.1.1 IP address in the default gateway, 10.1.1.1. And the subnet mask, 255.255.255.0. Now next, we're currently working with a four channel NVR here. So you can see it has four PoE ports on the left hand side. And then here is our network port if we wanted to connect it to a router for remote viewing. In this instance, we're just troubleshooting a camera so I don't have it connected to a network. This cable here is a pre-made cable that we did not crimp. This is factory crimped. You can tell because of the boot here, that it's not a hand crimped cable. Whenever you're doing troubleshooting, you always want to use a factory boot crimped cable. That way you know there is not a single doubt in your mind that that cable should work. And you'll even want to test it with one of your cameras that are already working to confirm it does work. I'm going to go ahead and plug that into channel one on my NVR. And here is where there are going to be some important things that I'm going to outline that are um, critical to the troubleshooting process. This just so happens to be one of our IPB401 cameras that features an IR cut filter. So when we connect this camera to our NVR, and I'm actually gonna go to the camera registration screen so I can explain some other things uh, as the camera boots up. But the initial troubleshooting trick here is when after plugging this camera in, uh, we're, I'm gonna go silent and we should hear the IR cut filter cut on and the color camera go into color mode. So I just plugged it in and in, within 15 seconds we should hear a click. All right, so you did hear the IR cut filter click. And then there's gonna be another trick. Uh, as you can see though, the camera actually successfully added here. I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom really briefly in on that. There is a green status. That means the camera actually connected. There's nothing wrong with this camera. Again, we're just trying to go over some troubleshooting tricks here. So since this camera does work, it powered on, we heard the IR click. Then the next step would be to, if you uh, still were unsure if this camera was powering on, you could actually cup your hand, cusp your hands over the, the lens of the camera and then bring that camera to your face or your eye so you can emulate uh, darkness. So if I were to try and do this, I could possibly even do it with the camera here. It might not work here. I'm gonna cover the light sensor here. And you should be able to hear the IR cut filter click 
and then you will see some red glowing on these IR LEDs as you see them ringed around the camera lens here. Uh, if you are able to successfully get it dark enough for the camera, you can also put a, a box over the camera or something like that if you're unable to get it to go into IR night mode. Then again, you should hear the IR cut filter click and the red LEDs come on. So I'm gonna try to quickly show that the red LEDs are on. As you can see, they're glowing purple on the iPhone video here, uh, and that means they are indeed on. And then it got too much light. Uh, the IR cut filter is very, very quiet on this camera, but then you see now that the there's enough light that the purple light went away on the LEDs. But that indicates that this camera is turning on because the IR lights are turning on. Now, although we know the camera is turning on, it may not always connect. Uh, just because there is IR light just means the camera is getting power. It doesn't mean, you know, there couldn't be another software issue or password issue with the camera. So now that we have the camera connected, uh, I can go back to my camera registration screen. And here is a red status at the top. However, the camera did successfully add. If I needed to get rid of that red status, I could just do a device search. It's already added the camera. There's no other cameras to add to the NVR at this time. But let's say I did get a red status down here uh, for my camera and it didn't pull up right away. Then what I would have to do is then back out of my menu by right clicking, right clicking, and then going to the grid screen. And there should be an error listed here, whether it says password, username or password error, it prompts you for a password, or it says network host not found. Or, or any other various issue. If you have an issue like that appear, you will want to go ahead and submit a support ticket on our website at the top right hand side of our website. Make sure to have your order number ready and then describe the issue you're having as well as a picture of the error you're receiving on your grid screen. I am just gonna show you a quick example. If I right click, go to main menu, go to camera, go to the edit button. I'm gonna set a wrong password. We cover this further in the guide, but I'm just gonna show what you would expect to get if you get a red status. So I'm just gonna fudge the password here and put like one, two, three, four, five, click okay. And what that's gonna do is give me a red status. So again, I would right click. I would right click again to get back to the grid screen. And here I'm prompted with a password entry for the camera. Uh, this usually only happens if you change the admin password for the system, disconnect cameras, try and reconnect them. Uh, and again, we cover this in another troubleshooting video for password errors. So like I mentioned before, if it's an error you're unsure of, or it's a password error and you need our help, please submit a support ticket at the top right hand side of our website. So I'm just gonna briefly go over some of the things that we did here. We made sure that our switch setting was set to default. We made sure there were no lingering device entries in our device list. We made sure that we're using a pre-made cable that we did not crimp ourselves. When we first booted the camera up, we checked for the IR cut filter. It was very, very quiet, so you could barely hear it in my video. However, depending on your camera, it may be loud, may be faint. And if not, what you can do is cusp your hands over the lens of the camera or place a box on top of it and look out for those IR LEDs being lit up. That will at least indicate if the camera is powering on. After we determined the camera is powering on, we went to the device registration screen. If it was green, that means the camera is good to go. If it's red, then we need to go back and check the grid screen for any errors. And moving on to the password video at the bottom of this article that will, or in another article, that will at least let you know how to troubleshoot a password error and then give you more attempts at trying that password. And like we mentioned earlier in the video, if there's something you don't understand, please do not hesitate to contact our support team by submitting a request at the top right hand side of our website. Have your order number ready, describe the problem, and then submit some pictures with the issue. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this video helps you determine how to troubleshoot your IP camera.